guitar. So far, real guitar. So far, wait. Where do I see over there? Is it gear? Oh no! Ah! Guitar safari is dangerous. Very nice. That, that's all. That's all I got this week. I had less time for preparation due to personal obligations. It it, it is definitely getting there. I'm trying. All right, so it looks like we've got a bunch of people in the chat already. Uh, Ryan Hall, I believe, was our first one today. So thank you, Ryan. Uh, we have And we have Ryan from OU812 as well. I and, of course, our buddy Randy Crooks with our Acid Drop Telly is uh, in the chat. And, of course, our, my North Texas buddy, Ferd Berfel. Is what there? Texas in the house? So... Uh, so we're, we're, we're off to a pretty good start here, Seth. Well, you know, I, I had to run out of um, Tony's room to get here yeah. at the last second. I'm sorry, Charles. You're probably like, what the hell? Because we usually always go like, so people know, like we were going to call it live after Tony. Mm. But we thought maybe that would be like, we didn't want to completely grab onto his coattails. But, you know, it's the community where we met. So we felt it fitting to continue that morning community so hopefully as people you know maybe they can double screen and double task but I, i'm on one phone so that's not yeah we just don't want to lose our, our folks that are non-tony viewers right so you know i'm gonna make sure we late in. and be a couple of dickheads <laughs> <laughs> all right so uh we also got janice lala in the chat good morning janice good we morning. got martian murray uh, who was with us as well. And so appreciate you guys. Um, let's see. And, um, oh, Martian Murray, South Texas. He's from South Texas. Very cool. And Janice Lala, we're talking about Tony from Addicted to Gear. He's another Canadian YouTuber. Does a great show on uh, every other Sunday morning from like 9 to about 11 or so. So uh, if if you if you like uh, if you like Ben show if you like watching Phil you you'd like watching Tony, uh, but there's a lot of gas talk there. So so Seth, our our topic today. Hold on, I'm not ready. Oh, you're not. Okay, I'm ready. Now you're ready. Okay, and Ben Coombs is in the chat. Good morning, Ben. How are you? All right. So, uh, yeah, so we, we have a topic here. You know, you've got a $400 budget and you have some choices, right? You can either buy a guitar. You can upgrade a guitar. And what's our third option? You could build a guitar, right? Okay. So do you buy, build, or upgrade you know, with your $400? <clears throat> Me? Why? Well, okay. Well, let's let's see. Ah, good morning to Martin from L and M Guitar Corner. Joining us, uh, joining us in the chat. Appreciate you, buddy. So I've yeah, I bought three in my lifetime, Charles, and you know that. Mm -hmm. I bought inexpensive, fantastic guitars that like almost needed nothing really. I have um, definitely upgraded guitars that were inexpensive and put around four hundred dollars and taken them to the maximum like really really great and i have um built guitars for uh because of texas toasts four hundred dollar challenge i built a guitar recently keeping all of my costs under four hundred dollars um and uh pulled off a pretty successful build mm -hmm. Oh yeah, that is a that is a sweet little build there. So yeah, you know, and and um, you know I have uh, you know I've I've bought for four hundred dollars, you know, less than four hundred dollars used, and I've put together for just a little. I've built for a little more than four hundred. Um, the uh, my my Telly 
This build came in, if we don't count shipping and handling on parts, this build came in at $427. Ooh, seven dollars over the magical number. Yeah, so uh, I'll give you seven bucks when it's done. Well, well no, I, I'm actually twenty-seven dollars over the maximum number there, so it's like ugh, it doesn't really qualify. But if I had gone with a different set of, well, maybe if I'd gone with a different set of pickups, maybe no, because because the pickups I have a Dylan flat pickups are expensive, pickups, my friend. They are, and uh, I've got a, a set of Dylan flat flat six pickups in it, right? Which are normally $200 pickups, but I was able to get them used for 75. Oh, so that's, even, that's killer, yeah. Yeah, so still killer. It's like, yeah, you know, but it, it you know, it's, it's amazing the things you can happen uh, that you can do with a build when you have a deep parts drawer already, right? Things you don't have to buy because you already have. Well, I got a question for you, Charles. Uh -huh. What should be the single most expensive component to a guitar that is built and we're just mainly talking for the most part bolt on necks this could even be something if you're gluing in the neck and setting it and doing a neck through well <clears throat> with that said what's the most expensive component is it your wood is it your i don't know what else the the the, the hardware mm -hmm. you know eh. or is it your pickups your pickups well, you know that's first, first, I'm going to say something to the chat. Uh, good morning, Michael Kraus. Uh, when we talk about buy, it is new or used. We're not limiting this here. It's what can you get for what you got. Um, but to answer your question, Seth, for me, it's the neck. Because when, you know, it's, I want to get the best quality neck on a guitar that I can get. Because honestly, I can make the body better. Right, I can alter that body, I can fabric top it, I can paint it, I can do whatever to make that body better. I can always install better hardware later. But um, so getting so where where the money needs to be spent for me is on the neck. Is it playable? Are the frets right? Uh, is the neck comfortable? Is it something that I'm gonna wanna pick up? Right. Uh, you know, a lot of guitar, you know, Phil McKnight talks about that handshake that that guitar has, right? You know, how does it feel at that neck joint, well, right? Well, you know, I'll say, and, I hear you, but with a neck, you actually can say you get a neck and it's not very comfortable, mm -hmm. right? And I know you've got the skill to do this. You just roll the fret ends, you, you right. polish the fret ends, you um, take some time and soften the fretboard edges. Um, dude, I'm telling you. And half an hour or, you know, an hour's worth of work. And I hope that's provided you don't need a fret level, but you might need to level the frets. That's no big deal. That's another, I don't know, 45 oh, yeah. minutes. No, no, you're right. There are certainly things you can do to neck to make it better if you've developed those skills, right? You know, and, and for a lot of folks, maybe that's not it. But you still have to be starting. We still have to start with a good neck because we both know I sent you a neck to be plucked that was just, done right perfect you know yeah. and so but you got it so you have to start with something that's good first so yeah you can roll those fretboard edges you can't you can round off the fret edges you know the the fret edges to make them but perfect you gotta have the tools right the tools right you gotta have the tools but uh but you still have to start with a decent neck absolutely so i mean what about you what is it what is it for you pickups hands down pickups that's the problem with building a four hundred dollar mm -hmm. electric guitar. Is I got the and I wanted to do it all. So if you're there, were real you no know, set down hardcore rules for the Texas Toast thing, which is super cool because they're like, look, we'll let you know if you're obviously breaking our rules. Just don't be stupid about the way that you're going about it. So I just I wanted to do what I do, which is build, buy all the parts and build something and bring it in under four hundred bucks. So I knew off the bat, the number one thing for me where I would have to save the money would be the pickups. So on Guitar Fetish, they have these crazy sales from time to time. And then they have a, um, now and then these specific items that are on clearance. And they're not always shitty items that are on clearance. They're on sometimes mm -hmm. items that people haven't tried or didn't want to try because they were like a little bit. So these pickups are um, slick. Earl Slick, which are really freaking good, um, but they're extra super hot wound. It's like 15K 
and 12k or something mm -hmm. so they were on a um blowout sale for i think it was 25 bucks and 25 bucks yeah so 50 bucks for a set of pickups done right and then the body is at around 100 the neck is around 100 uh, so that we're 250 the bridge the tuning bridge is like what this is 25 the tuning keys are like 35 or 40 electronics so it came in just under you know just under I'm looking in the chat and kind of going through the comments here. And I got to say, I'm, I'm a little bit jealous of some of these things going on here. Like for, uh, for example, Randy Crook says he had a recent guitar safari that netted him an LPD 87 deluxe blackout, which is uh, killer. So, yeah. you know, beyond jealous there. Um, let's see. And, and uh, let's, oh, there was something. I'm, I'm just scrolling. I had to scroll back a long way for that one. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. <laughs> ben says, not sure if I could buy a, a gigable guitar for $400 these days. I'll choose to upgrade with that budget. So, all right. And uh, so, oh, very nice. I'm liking this color. It was like a turquoise. Yeah. Double humbucker. So it's it's my LT, which is basically a Les Paul Telly. Les Paul setup, one volume, one tone. That's how we do it. Um, oh, made the bone nut. So the bone nut blank was like four, four or five bucks. Okay. So that, and then, so that's one of those things. Like you can only make the nut well, you could do it the old fashioned way on spacing, but if you have the spacing ruler and all that stuff it makes it quick and easy. Yeah. But I mean, so yeah, this thing was, I have the parts sheet I was looking for. Dude, I found a stack that thick of receipts and couldn't find <laughs> one like this uh, that was proving that it was all under, it was significantly under um, 400 bucks because I left money in there if I wanted to do a fleck. Mm -hmm. if it needed it if it had to have it but you know the neck didn't need it so well in and martian murray says he'd find a squire and upgrade it later like he's done before and let's see um and then we have a lot of people saying hello to each other awesome uh, and R Randy Crooks also says his, his most recent recently he picked up uh, an Ibanez S470 for $200. It was a great buy, plays great, sounds great. Don't need to do anything to it. So he went with the buy on that one. And Michael Crow says he got he he uh, he once got a Squire 51 for $25. It made a tra uh, and a trademark 10 amp for free. So it looks like he's got 375 left over. <laughs> you still got a working budget there. You got to love that. Um, See, what we weren't going to do, and I, that I wasn't going to do this on the Texas Toast contest, because I could have thrown a set of, um, you know, $200 each Bartolini humbuckers. You know, I got plenty of them. But because mm -hmm. I'm getting them at a discount, that isn't properly represented in the contest. Like if you were, you were supposed to claim the amount of money that it is like, you know, worth. And so if you buy something and say, I got it used and it only cost me X amount, then it was kind of unfair. That's why when I found the killer deal on these pickups and when I got them and they sounded so good, they sound so good. Everybody that I've lent this guitar to, which I have lent it out to two or two people. So, both people, not everybody, but both of the people were like, this thing is freaking killer. Those pickups are awesome. I was like, yeah, man. Mm -hmm. And uh, Martin from l &M Guitar Corner says he probably couldn't get a, get away with building for $400 because of the stuff he wants on it. But he says uh, he would spend uh, for a quality bridge, electronics, humbuckers, tuners, and nut. So... Very good, and actually, so you know, and Martin does impeccable work. I mean, attention to detail on that. Uh, good morning, Lucas. How are you? The nut makes a big difference 
on tunability and playability, you do a good bone nut and you cut the slots right and uh, you make it look nice. It um, it's a big deal. Yeah, I I intend on getting a nut cutting glass when I come out to California. I'm just just saying that's happening. You don't have a choice. It's <laughs> it's not hard for some people. Like I think it was harder for me to develop the skill than other people that I've watched to. Mm -hmm learn how to do it because I didn't have wood shop. I'm you're you're good. Your eye probably looks at taking stuff away and peeling. So I had to learn to do all of that, you know, um, but it took a long time. And I'll tell you this, my boss was not easy on me. He scrutinized me to the point of infuriation. Like I would get so upset. Anyway, long story short, finally, I made it through the rigorous ninja training and got to the point where I had them that passed. And still, that he was probably like, mm, it's not quite what I would like, but it's definitely like way better than Fender or anything else that you buy, you know, and what you see on high end mm -hmm. custom guitars, but just not as good as him. Right. And tell him, like, not everybody's as good as you, dude. I, I surf with Kelly Slater. That, I mean, I'm, I'm in the same ocean sitting next to him. Not as good as him, but I'm not dead either. I was out there. Definitely. Definitely. And of course, I uh, want to say hello to Blackjack Guitar. Appreciate you coming in. And uh, Martian Murray says he got a Squire Jag for 300 And all he's done so far is really to upgrade uh, to uh, $50 Graph Tech saddles, uh, which is which is a really, those that ends up being a really good upgrade. Well, that's a super smart I, upgrade. Yeah. I, exactly. I love that. Saddles where the rubber meets the, meets the road. I love the graph tech stuff, you know, whether it be a nut, you know, I've had really good success with their nuts and with their uh, string trees. And, and especially because you can get the string trees in different colors and the nut in different colors. So you can match your build based upon that and still get something, you know, is going to be good and, and, and really workable. Oh, and by the way, when you're holding up the, the blue guitar there, Ben says he'd play that. So just so you know. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, Ferd well, here's the thing. I know Ben would shred it, and he would be like, oh, my God, dude, Presley, I, like, I love this guitar. This guitar is badass. And I'd be like, fuck, there goes 400 bucks. Take it home, Ben. I'm sorry, you know, because you know, as soon as he visits the shop, I'm sure. And actually, I've been, like I said, I, right now I'm doing a transition into being on the teacher's wages, which is Charles will tell you, you know, it's a thing. It's not easy. It's a thing. It's a real but thing. But I got Ben's bridge right here. Here's Ben's bridge. And then I'll get Ben's purple body. He's got a badass looking. Oh, very black nice. Black bridge. And then I've got some tuning keys. So he said it's cool if I part, if I kind of part one together. But he wants a hardtail. So I'm going to order the purple sparkle um, hardtail body. Oh, very cool. Very, very cool. Anyway, but you know, it might be a little while coming together, and we'll bring that into the show. Oh, yeah. And, and our buddy, Ferd Burfel, he bought an Oscar Schmidt Washburn uh, 335 clone a couple of years ago for about $200. Yeah. He, he, he got a set of uh, Epiphone Pro Buckers in it with the coil, uh, coil split wiring for 50 bucks. So he's about 250 into that, which ends up being a really nice build. Probably sounds great. Yeah. Some of those guitars that might have somewhat questionable fretwork, uh, maybe Firefly, or just mm -hmm. inexpensive stuff, right? You want to know the secret for the 335s? And um, it, you might not be used to them, but throw a set of flats on there. If you've got kind of janky frets, uh -huh. that will, the you know, the coating on those will absorb a lot of the pain of uh, terrible frets. If you can't afford the fretwork, that would be the first thing I'd recommend. Put a little Thank more... You relief in it. I, I, I've got to read this one because it's just going to make your day. Ben says when he visits Seth at the shop, he's bringing a trailer. <laughs> Hello, Wayne. Welcome. Welcome into the chat. We appreciate Guitar Safari. What's the thing is, if you... Um, hey, Michael, be live. Bring like a Winnebago on a road trip. That would be... You know what, you know what I wanted to do? I wanted to start a company called Winnebago, all right? <laughs> this is the thing where you take a Winnebago <laughs> and you turn it into kind of a food truck and you sell bagels out of your food truck, mainly at surf spots, because that's what I wanted to do, go surfing. 
And then as soon as you have a line out, you have a line more than 10 people deep, somebody wins a bagel. Win a bagel, ding, 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 ding. They win a bagel, but you got to pay for the schmear because I'm not uh-huh. giving you cream cheese. There you go. Well, you know, I, I will tell you, we're, we're talking, showing you, since we're showing off builds here for the cheap, right? $50 for the body, and it was just black. This was my, and this is the first one I fabric topped. So I've got about $100 in fabric topping material in it. Actually, less than that because it's a, it's a junior. All right. We did the, uh, we did the vintage tuners. Right. It on it. And um, we put a TV Jones TV classic in there, and it is a completely different guitar. Yeah, it's uh, a big chunky neck, like a nice chunky neck. Yeah, it, 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 yeah, it, it's it's not too big. Ooh. And there it goes. Yeah, it'll be fine. That hurt. <laughs> Good thing we talk about guitar repair on this. Yes. Thing. We know some people. <laughs> All right, no, but you know, that was a that was a $50 guitar, uh $125 pickup. Got a got a deal on the pickup, and uh, I think it was uh, fifteen dollars for the tuners. Perfect. That's the yeah. yeah. That's the way to try to get the deals where you can get them. I'm waiting to use these for free. Okay. Um. Hey, I'll be right back. Okay. I got something going on here that I need to kind of take care of. Okay. All right. Let's see. I wonder what he's doing, Seth. What the hell, dude? I don't know what what I don't know what he's doing. I mean, I, he's probably coming back real soon. I think it's you, Seth. I think he can't deal with you and your attitude and the way that you are, dude. I thought that we talked about this that you weren't going to embarrass me on the international. Weber vision. This is not look, he just needs to shut up. I've had it. I've had it. Oh. Hey, what's is up? Is he getting in trouble again? Is he getting in trouble again? Dude, I don't know. This this, this guy he comes here, harasses me. We used to be friends. <sighs> Sherman. Hopefully everything's okay. You're good. Yeah, we're we're good. I just had something something came up that had to be taken care of right away. So all right. you know, life, in the, life in the real world sometimes, right? And said, well, it's like if I had a hair out of place. Yeah. <laughs> no, stop the show. Oh. Uh, we Wayne, we're we back at 11, me. people. Yeah. So uh, Ferd gives us an update on that 335 clone. He says uh, they were level, but the ends were a little sharp. He smoothed them out with uh, some 220, 320 uh, two-sided sandy sponge. A little bit of this. It's a way to go. Yeah. Definitely a way to go. And uh, rough spots. You know, there's a lot you can do if you've got patience, right? It's a lot you can do if you have patience. Well, and YouTube. Yes. Which didn't exist 25 years ago. You're out of luck. Well, yeah, I mean, I, I think I've come pretty far in in the last three years. I mean, in, in, in before the pandemic, I had hardly picked up a guitar in my life like uh nowadays you can find thousands of people to show you the wrong way to do things you know how that goes but there's a few out there that'll show you the right way but there's a lot of people that are, anyway probably it's me half the time but whatever <laughs> i just show you how i know how to do whatever i know how to do. Yeah. Yeah, Martin, those uh, Groat 335s were actually are actually kind of pretty nice. Uh, so I'll keep an eye out for one for you. See if we can't I find don't have any um, hol- um, hollow body guitars. No 335, no nothing, nothing like that. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Not in my arsenal. It's not a thing. Not even a thin line telly? Nope. I used to have one. So... Story about a thin line telly. I bought my dad, my stepdad, before he passed away, I bought him a thin line telly for Christmas. I had bought it at Guitar Center in San Francisco coming home from a, a day, full day of hang gliding, shredding back and forth on the cliffs and doing all this fun stuff. Uh-huh. 
parched up, head back. I tell my boy, hey, man, can we pull over and go to Guitar Center real quick? And he's like, oh, hey, I got to break off. We'll split off. But will you take your my gear with you so we can go flying tomorrow? Put all his gear in the back of the Subaru that I had and my gear. Go into Guitar Center to buy the guitar. Come out. And I knew what I wanted. I knew exactly which one. Walked in and walked out within 15 minutes. Um, and somebody had broke the back window of the Subaru and stolen all the hang gliding equipment. Are you serious? Oh. Yeah, like three thousand dollars worth of stuff that no one can use except for a hang glider pilot. It was so painful. Yeah, definitely not easy things to replace. Ah, you know, my um, my buddy took it pretty well. I think that like I forget exactly. I think he took it pretty well. Like I didn't have to fully pay for his like I don't know. I don't remember. It was a long time ago. Yeah, that sucked. And I probably tried to block, uh, block it out. I remember going back and looking through dumpsters and looking around in the area, thinking that the thief, once they realized what they had was worthless, they would discard it. Mm -hmm. And I had no luck. Yeah. Well, Randy and uh, Randy Crooks is in the chat, and he says he's one of those guys who have no clue how to get things done the right way. But Randy is a guy that is always on the hunt for the next guitar, for the next piece of gear as well. <laughs> He's on a guitar safari. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Oh, Seth, we're we're in for a real a, a rare treat here. Tinko Bell, Tinker Bell is in the chat. This guy is is awesome. Haven't seen him in a while. So, uh, Tink, welcome to Guitar Safari. My very first long term girlfriend in Hawaii, Deborah. She was a exotic dancer she had a tinkerbell tattooed on her shoulder so tinkerbell like gives me flashbacks good and bad mm -hmm. <laughs> no mainly good i mean i try to remember the good she was fantastic yeah, yeah. I, I, I i i just my mind is is trying to stay clean all right so anyway you can't right. stay clean on a safari it's dirty Oh, so so looking again at this this whole thing, right? Do you buy? Do you build? Uh, do you upgrade? And so you know you've done them all. What has been your best result out of those? I would say this build for under four hundred bucks has been one of my. I would be super content with this guitar. Like um, I find myself bringing this one home when it's not lent out to people, and I lend it out as a way to say, look. Look, look, look what can be done um, without a lot of tools. Because without this, you need some tools, but you're not Texas Toast level tools. All those dudes are hardcore. They're going to be using planers and splingity and saws and jiggity jams and spray guns and all that stuff. And if you don't have that, and you've got a screwdriver and you've got a $12 soldering mm -hmm. gun um, or, you know, the little wand you can get away with um putting together a pretty damn okay guitar for let's say you spend 400 bucks on this and then you don't have a lot of luthier skills you might have to spend another 200 to make it really nice mm -hmm. right? and then you've got a guitar that you built for 600 that's really tipped off yeah well, it, 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 that's the thing about, uh, you know, kind of the way the, the approach that I take to it. I find the, you know, a, a cheap guitar that is like, you know, if anywhere from between, you know, from $20 to $100, you know, is, is kind of like the, the upper limit. Because if I'm going to do something to it right now, if if I'm just going to buy it to play it and it's what I want, then I'll, then I'll go more. But if I'm going to do something to it, if I'm going to modify it, I kind of try to set that limit for myself because I want that extra, I want that extra room and what I'm, what am I going to do to it? Right. So, so I can put that really good pickup in it so that if I, you know, I want to put, uh, rewire all the electronics, if I want to, you know, do all, you know, do all those things, uh, you know, try to start with something that's got a good base core and, and then kind of go on from there. And, you know, and that's been, you know, and, and if I'm building something, if, if I'm doing the build, I will, I have a, I have a bunch of projects that are 
around in different pieces because I will take the I will top, I will shop it kind of part by part and look at what the opportunities are, right? So mm -hmm. when I was doing my Mexican telly, it was, it's all fender parts build except for the pickups. And so, you know, originally the idea for that was I had no idea what the body was going to look, what color the body was going to be, but ideal, you know, but I wanted, I wanted like a green or a red. And of course, you know, I got the cream. Right. But, but, it was, but my whole shopping philosophy for that was I, I was going to build an all part, uh, all fender parts telecaster. Okay. And so, you know, so I, I wanted, you know, I wanted a colored body. I wanted like uh, maybe a, a, a baked maple neck or a rosewood neck, of course, you know, but then, but I decided I want to do this. I want to see how cheaply I could build this at quality. Right. Mm -hmm. And so, um, so I ended up, you know, I ended up with the, the body, which I got for a deal because it's a heavier body. And the guy that was getting rid of it was a gigging was a gigging musician, so mm -hmm. it's like he had to fix the van so they could get to the gig, and he had this body that was too heavy to really gig with. So you know, it kind of went from there. Um, uh, the neck, uh, the neck is, is 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 another story. It is a uh, a Chris Schlitt shiftlet neck off the twenty one, off the two thousand twenty one model. Yeah, I and, saw that. yeah, and yeah, you did. You, you plucked that neck, didn't you? Yeah, I did that, yeah. <laughs> and um, I, I got you know, I found that neck for just a song, you know, it, you know, it, it, it was it was high ready robbery what I paid for it, in terms of I got away with something, right? Because, right. Um, but it, it, you know, it, you know, it was. I asked the guy if he could take twenty dollars off the price he was listing it at. He did it, and I got the neck. And I tell you. One of the things that I, I, I realized from going back and I watching my Telly Tuesday video, mm -hmm. and you if you look at me in, in the video playing the different tellies, all of a sudden when I played that neck, it was much smoother than the other tellies. And I wasn't even looking, I wasn't even looking at my left hand on that. Yeah, playability when you dial it in, you have to think a lot less. And it, but it, and it's it's one of those things where I didn't you know I didn't even have that conscious knowledge until after I was watching the video later, right, <laughs> right. But yeah. Anybody else got uh, newly finished projects or other walkabout workbench uh, things they want to talk about before we move on to the tone track segment where um, people could cover what new things they've got in their lives to. to uh -huh. make better tone michael b live says he had he's had successes and failures with new and build uh only successes with upgrades so he prefers uh when new works out well you know that's optimal right get what you oh. know get what you want get you know get it the way you want if you can but he has had success with upgrades as well yep and let's see um, and to kind of segue into our next piece that you just brought up, Martian Murray back in the chat says he just got a Boss Katana Air. And oh, nice. it is his kitchen countertop amp that he never knew he needed. Well, see, I appreciate that um, input because remember we were talking last week about um, I do need some tiny little shop amps for headphones. So Katana Air, huh? is he using it with headphones? I um, I didn't think kitchen. So. but it's his kitchen. It, it, he's, he's using it as a kitchen counter amp, so uh, he may be just be playing it loud. So well, that's cool, though. Yeah, uh, let's see. There was something. Else. Oh, Michael B. Live is trying to find an ACDC shirt, uh, to top his Gretsch with. Very cool, dude. ACDC shirts are in Target now. Yeah, you you can find them all over if you if you're looking hard enough. Maybe he's looking for a particular something yeah, actually particular, cool, not one yeah. that's hard. I, I told exactly. you, I see these kids that don't even they're wearing a Journey shirt, and you're like, you know, you know, who Journey is. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know who Journey is, Mr. Presley, but we found this shirt at, at uh, Target. And Randy Crook says, having a heavy GLNL asset is how I got the Ibanez AR520. 
he nice. kept looking at the asset thinking how heavy it was and didn't pick it up the asset uh you know the asset must have been about 11 pounds and i yeah. get that you know i get that if you're if you're someone that plays standing up all the, you know you like to play standing up then then heavy can be something but you know f- for me weight doesn't really matter all that much because you know i play sit, sitting down and you know there's always another guitar to reach for when it gets too heavy <laughs> Yeah, I just am never super proud of a, a build, even though I'm not super, that much in control of it when it ends up heavier than I would like. You know, yeah. when you, some finishes, especially sparkle finishes, um, the, you know, cloth top process, because you can use a, lot, a little bit of finish, can, if you don't have a super light piece of wood, it might not be the lightest. But, um, you know, it is what it is. Yeah, and Dennis Ellis says he just got it. Uh, he just got, he just put good tuners on the last cheap Squire he got uh, for eighty dollars, and it plays and sounds excellent. It plays and sounds light, is what he's actually saying. Smart man. Yep. Squires are the way. Actually, let me show you something Squire related. I think doop 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 doop. Here, the parts pile. Shuffling around back there. This Randy, be, uh, let me answer a question real quick. Uh, Randy, it. you are the only one that has a custom shirt to your specific guitar. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. This is a, a made in Mexico neck, huh? A made in Mexico squire. Hmm. I know they were doing it for a little while, but I haven't seen a ton of made in Mexico squire. So yeah, were they, up, was that back in the 90s? I think so. I looked up the year. I think it was like 96 or something. Mm-hmm. 96 or 97. So this is a fairly old neck. Have a good one, Martin. Peace out, Martin. So it's a pretty old neck. I bought it off. Um, so, you know, I've got a, some Squire stuff that I might want to build up just to shop Squire, I guess, just for the hell of it. Why not, right? Yeah. And so how is it as a neck? What's that? How is it as a neck? You know, I don't I don't remember playing it when it was on a guitar. I mean, probably wasn't that great because I pulled it off. Right. And I was like getting rid of this. But I think at that time I was parting together Fender stuff. And so probably had a killer body and um, the neck wasn't quite, you know, mm-hmm. I, I forget. I did so many guitars, dude. I have. I'm up to like a hundred sales almost on reverb, and then that's just reverb. Like throughout my life, I've done twice as many of that locally, and like just so it's just so many guitars. I don't remember. Excellent. And hello to Dennis Ellis. I saw you snuck in there, and let's see. Um, there was where was it? Um, Oh, Cushman NYC, he's upgraded a lot of guitars in his time, he says. So, yeah. So, well, give us the list. Yeah. Squire, Ibanez, you know, I mean, because I kind of have done, done them all mostly, I think, but mainly brands that I like. Mm hmm. Like I did some Ibanez's back in the day, a couple of Road Stars that I found that the bodies were completely shot and beat. Um, yeah, someday we should do a we can do a program of like oh my twenty favorite builds that I've done in the past few years and just pull them up and have the pictures because mm-hmm. all the pictures still exist. You can go back and reminisce on um, reverb. It's so fun. <laughs> look at the catalog as it goes by. So yeah, speak. look and you can see how your ideas got better and you, you try something new and that oh wow this sold. You know, mm-hmm. yeah, I've, I've got, I've got, uh, got to get going on my, uh, on getting some product up on reverb. Well, just you, you've had enough people bringing new product just, um, through your YouTube endeavor. So that's going to keep you busy and only do that on your downtime. Right. And if you don't have yeah. downtime, keep up keeping your people happy. Yeah. And my, my wife has been after me to do the local farmer's market kind of thing. And, 
you know, and take, it's like, but I don't have inventory to take out there. And she's like, well, take the ones that are yours that you've done. And I'm like, yeah, but those are mine. They're not going I don't anywhere. Want to sell them. <laughs> right. It's kind of like this, this one here, like I, I don't want to sell it. Um, it's not up for sale. So it's also uh, really fun to play and it's nice to show off. Well, I, I, I love what you ended up doing with it. You know, a lot of times I'll do a body for somebody and then, you know, it's like, and you'll go and you see, okay, well, you know, yeah, I don't always get to see the end product. Right. And so uh, to see you, um, to see you having put that all the way together and to see you playing it and doing videos with it has been a real joy for me. Oh, thanks, man. Uh, after, you know, after it came together, got a good setup. It was pretty much good to go. That's also some good, um, I think they are Earl Slick pickups in there and they mm -hmm. sound fantastic. People have heard them. What I don't have yet is the computer DAW hookup to where the, the guitar goes directly into the computer. You mm -hmm. can really hear on your end more of what I'm hearing. It's not fair really to the guitar or the pickups or whatever, just a secondhand sound on the iPhone, you know. Uh, microphone doesn't seem very. And Paul McNary uh, has just entered in the chat that he's been with us since the beginning and he's been lurking. Well, Paul, glad you've been here. Uh, su super glad that you make the show, buddy. By the power of Paul McNary. You know, I, I know that Paul McNary, Paul McNary prefers to build guitars, I believe. Yes, but, you know, but Paul's not going to quite be making our budget because he likes to go out and build those Texas Toast guitars. The, the big the big time dollars. Well, yeah, he's he, he's he's only over by, you know, a little bit. <laughs> but, he, you know, he, he's gone out to Texas Toast a couple different times and built guitars out there. Uh yeah, recently he was out and everybody was like, where's Ferd? We haven't seen him in a while in the chats. And he's like, well, I was out at Texas Toast building it. So, uh, Paul McNeary, I will definitely hit you up when I go to Texas Toast, which hopefully, if I can get stuff figured out, be in the next year or whatever. I know they're a little bit booked out and I am just in a place where I once I get into school next year and have an, an idea of the flow of it, then I plan on taking and booking that time that coordinates with my time off and them doing the class because it's mm -hmm. super fun. I mean, I've done it all with Jeff at Guitar Works, but it's with them, it's very concise. And it's like you have that. It happens in four days, all of it. So, ah, And uh, so Paul McNary says he's doing the $400 Texas Toast contest. And he says it's tough. It's tough. It's hard to do it on that budget. Yeah, Paul, that's what I'm saying with this guy. That's um, and it, it was a pretty damn good result for. And um, I think I even counted the shipping because I got a good deal on the shipping. It was like thirty five dollars, but I may have not counted the shipping, um, and just made those one of those gray areas where they're not really they don't you know the rules are kind of, and plus it's thirty dollars, not like you're trying to sneak in. Well, it's like that's always the question you sit here and you ask yourself because I've I've got a, a I've got a document together for for my telly build right and I have it broken down into two different ways, the price you know the price of the parts and then the price of the parts with shipping and taxes it's two different things, <laughs> right and when you sit there and you talk about uh, you talk to the other guitar guys about the deal you got on something you don't talk about shipping you don't talk about the taxes <laughs> you know you might unless you got you know tax out the door, you know, no tax out the door, right? Uh, but you, you you concentrate on that price. And so I, I think so when they say your budget is this, I don't think that should count shipping and handling or taxes. And Yeah, I'll tell you this, as a small time builder, when I already have five man hours or six or who knows, probably a lot more than I would even want to admit man hours into a guitar that I have up for sale and it finally sells, I'm very honest about my... Um, my parts costs, you know, they're all around four or $500, depending on the pickup. Some of them are worth with Bartolinas are worth a lot more, but then I tack on a, what I feel is a very fair labor charge onto that. But what people don't remember, and then they're like, okay, all right, well I'll pay a thousand bucks. But then they don't even think about the fact that when it sells, 
we as the seller have to have a box, mm -hmm. have to have bubble wrap, have to have, you know, the ability to pack it smart enough to where it doesn't just get destroyed on its way there and go and ship it. So that whole thing there is 30 to 40 to $30 in, in packaging supplies and, and half an hour to 45 minutes, probably an hour total when you get to UPS store and get it dropped off um, in labor time. Yeah. So it's all these things. As a small builder, everything gets you. You know, these other guys are sending out truckloads at a time. You're doing one every two weeks. You know, standing at FedEx. Here you go. No, Martin, I get that. Uh, especially being over o over in Austria, yeah, shipping and taxes are going to be a huge factor for you there. And so you can't really leave them out when you when you talk about doing a build. Uh, I get that. And we're, we're, we got Martin back because dinner's been delayed. So, good dinner has been <laughs> delayed. It's Austria. That's in Austria, he's over in Austria, so it's evening time for him. That's so cool. They're about eight hours ahead of us. Any uh, anybody got cool stuff for us in our question quest, where yeah. we look for the truth? Um, Anybody trying to fix their guitar have a question about what tool I might yeah. use off of this fantastic bench behind me to fix your problem? Any questions? Uh, life questions. Big Seth, please tell us about the cosmos and how gravity is actually created. And I, I have I got all the answers for you, man. I I can pull it fr from here, but not from here because that's only for where I keep my gear knowledge. Oh, that's funny. So in the chat, Kush is saying he loves the show. Just just so you know. Think you want to have that. Wayne does uh Wayne does have a question. He says, Seth, what percent do you mark up your parts on your builds? Zero percent. I don't mark up my parts at all. What I pay for my parts is what you pay for my parts. I mark up only for the amount of time that I had into the instruments. I eat a lot of the costs actually, because I love what I do and I do it as a secondary form of uh, employment, not my main job, right? Mm -hmm. Initially I was working for guitar works and that pays the bills and I could build guitars on the side. Now I'm a teacher for special education kids um, or teacher's assistant anyway, but, um, that pays the bills kind of for me to enjoy building guitars and gives me a lot of time off. So because of that, uh, you know, someday maybe, but I'm not trying to get rich, dude. All of these guitars are only for me to put something out into the world that I know is good and I know has uh, positive vibes in it and people can shred on them. Look at my uh, reverb reviews as like a good um, the way to grasp what people think of what they get, they get delivered to them and how, how they like playing them. Mm -hmm. And that, I just do it because I love it, man. Thank you so much, dude. Mm -hmm. uh, and Michael B has, has a question, router bit suggestion for binding. And I will say I bought the inexpensive, uh, the inexpensive, inexpensive uh, router bit off of Amazon. And it works for me. But it does mean that I typically have to do more work sanding it out and making sure it's perfect. So if, 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 and, and I have that kind of patience to do that, but I would recommend to anyone that, that wants to do it and doesn't want to spend that time, go ahead, go to Philadelphia Luther Supply, go to head to back and get their actual routing bit that is meant for routing binding. Get the proper tools, I tell you. And the proper tools. Because I, I spend the time doing it, and I really wish I had the right tool, and I will be getting <laughs> I will be getting the proper routing bit going forward. But it, it, it holds up too because you know the a, a better routing uh, a better routing bit is gonna keep its edge longer too. So uh, I get it with cheap tools. Like I, growing up, I thought that uh, duct tape was an actual component of most vehicles. Um, let's just say that like, you know, we grew up kind of poor, so we didn't have the finest and the fanciest. So we made what we had work. And I kind of grew up doing that. And um, even as you get more money into your life, if you can keep that mentality, I always think of this, uh, have what you need and need what you have. Mm -hmm. 
And Dennis Ellis says, uh, the chicken or the egg, I am going with the chicken. You know, which came first? You're going with the chicken? I'm going with the chicken. I think the egg was dropped from outer space. <laughs> See? Neil deGrasse Tyson, you are so smart. Because, like, you know, boom. <laughs> I don't and know. Marshall, I eggs every morning. I love eggs. Eggs. I make an egg cup. It's a little bit of pepper and then a little bit of cheese on it. Goes mm -hmm. into the microwave for it used to be forty three seconds, but now we got a new microwave. This forty three seconds is too much. Yeah, thirty eight seconds seems to be what it needs to be to make the perfect egg cup. <laughs> it's the egg science, Marsha Marie says. Excellent. Uh, uh, Marsha Murray also asks, he says, he says uh, where can I find a nice Jaguar neck? A uh, real Jaguar neck? Probably on Reverb. A nice one? Good luck. Um, a Jaguar neck, isn't that pretty much the same as a Strat neck? Uh, I, I don't know if the is a net po neck pocket may be different. I think the neck pocket is rounded like a Strat neck in a Jaguar. I don't remember them being squared. It's been a minute since I've done one, but not that many minutes. Well, and if you want a new one, another good alternative for that would be Stratosphere. You'll pay for it, but... Right. Yeah. Right. Huh. Still That's better cool. than trying to buy it from Fender. That's awesome, yeah. Or try to buy it direct. Or, um, hmm, I wonder if that's on the list for what you could build up at Texas Toast. That would be killer. A little Jag, a little super light, super what? comfortable. I need a Jaguar in my life. Not to say it. Damn it. Damn it. Uh, Ryan Hall says, need a good set of Strat SRV sounding pickups. Best suggestions for any uh, any on sale. I don't know if they're on sale, but what's the um, Seymour Dunn makes a killer set that I have installed. Yeah. Fraylin makes a killer set that I've installed, but they're all expensive. We were talking about that earlier. Most expensive component, man. All right. Uh, I, I think another good alternative there would be the Texas Specials. I mean, also, I bet you that you could contact Dylan directly and send him an email and just tell him a couple of personal things. And he mm -hmm. might not wind you personal pickups, but he's got this, you know, access. He might say, Oh, this, this, and this, this is the or one he you might want. even recommend something that you never even thought of by asking a couple of questions. Exactly. You know, I, I try to ask as many questions as I can, especially in, um, in a situation with the customer to find out what's going to make them happy. I don't want to tell them about what I do. You know, yeah. I need to ask them what about what, what they do. Yeah, and an update from Martian Murray here. He says Jaguars have 24 inch scale. So, oh, it's just a tiny bit. I don't think that's, I mean, it's a half inch. You're going to be fine. Where would you find one, though? Stratosphere, probably. Yeah. So, this is almost ready. I just need um, four damn neck screws to change out the plate, and then it's going <laughs> to go up. So stoked on it. It plays so good and sounds really nice. There you go. Yeah. So Dennis Ellis says uh, inlays or binding. What's that? Do you prefer inlays or binding? I prefer both. <laughs> you know what I mean? If my guitar is going to have really nice inlays, I want it to have binding. If it has dots, I don't want it to have binding. Most of my guitars don't have binding for the most part i don't hmm don't cheers know. martin like for me guitar isn't really as much of an elegant thing i think binding came in when people were like i have a guitar and a lot of money ben coombe right. says you should in response to that srv question ben coombe says the srv set <laughs> and see ben is much much smarter than i am he uses the oh here from here he pulls it into the no i think i would have if i would have done i just didn't want to i hate misquoting and feeling like you're you're on the yeah. spot because you said something that was wrong but he's totally right the srv set is the srv set would be a way to go yeah 
But then again, you never know. You find some stuff that um, you could. So SRV's tone, I think, wasn't. I mean, it was his pickups, yes. But his amps were heavily modified, and his tone was like this crank. It looked, um, has anybody watched the shows on uh, SRV's amp tech and all mm -hmm. this stuff he did to his Fender amps? No, maybe. I don't know. But he did a bunch of stuff, and the amps were really overdriven, and that's a big part of the tone, right? You got to have the pickups too, but the amp is. But, you know, if he's going for the SRV pickups, you probably already got the amp covered, dude. Who am I talking to, man? Our, our people, got, they know what the hell's going on. That's what I love. Yeah, that, that they do. That they do. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Sorry about the mobile cam, y'all, but, hey, we got to make sure that we're, we're keeping it moving. <laughs> I'm so happy with this guitar. I've started playing it lately, and um, I just wish that I could spell the word burgundy. <laughs> <laughs> your spell, uh, check, your spell check can be your friend <laughs> uh nocturnal news anybody out there in the safari world dropping some logic on us what's going on ben you got some um you got some videos coming up i don't know if tony came over but tony's been cranking out some cool videos that one with the pickup mm -hmm. uh, uh with the magnet that's super useful uh he could probably do another video showing how you can use a raw um what is it, a raw earth magnet a, um, to re-energize a bad pull piece on a pickup if you have one. Yeah. And that'd be a neat, I know that he's probably got the tools to do that. I don't have it here, but that'd be a cool video. He's, he's making a bunch of cool stuff. And every freaking week I'm watching fun stuff from, um, from Ben coming out. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm telling you, both, uh, both, uh, both Tony and Ben have been putting out quite, quite, a, quite a few videos. And, you know, you're having trouble keeping up. Right. So it's like, yeah, I'm, but it, always enjoying that content there. So and Ben says he's got a bunch of videos coming out this week every day. So awesome. Looking forward to that. And uh, Jeff K, welcome to the chat. Glad so Jeff, to have you there, buddy. Yo. And, so I don't know. What, what do we do next week? Because, you know, we're, we're getting down to the end of our time here and. What are we going to do next week? We had a heck of a time figuring out what we're going to do this week. Well, I mean, I've got more ideas. I would just probably need to get really stoned and then they just fall out of my head. So uh, and later on tonight when we're watching Ben's show, that shouldn't be a problem. Uh -huh. So uh, then we can do some brain <laughs> some brainstorming. Hey, I saw you had a blue moon the other night. That was awesome, right? Yeah, it, it was. it was good. It was good. I was thinking about building, uh, since I have all these Squire parts, I could build the Squire. And <laughs> I could, um, oh, I, I could, um, what I could do is put out these different parts that I have, right? Mm -hmm. And then we'll let the chat decide what parts I put into it. Th that they do, Ben. That they do. You said lifestyle choices always help. Lifestyle choices. Well, you know, maybe you know one of the things that we should talk about this idea that you and I've been kicking around, where we where we take a guitar, we pick up something cheap, and we uh, we 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 get a bunch of YouTubers involved here, right? And, right, and so I'll go ahead and I'll fabric top the body, in in, in the neck. And we just send it out to willing people uh, in the YouTube community that want to have a part in it. And the idea would be you can change whatever you want to about this guitar. You can do whatever you want to. But everything that was already on that guitar, it stays with the guitar. Right? And so and once it goes through the whole process, what we'll do is we'll go ahead and figure out a way to auction it off and donate that money to uh, Guitars for Vets or something like that. Well, here's the thing also. You take the leftover parts because mm -hmm. you're supposed to send the parts. Say you comes to me and I say, well, you know what? I got some cool pickups. I'm going to put these cooler pickups in it that I got. I got a good deal. But I'm going to take out the existing and they go with the guitar to the next person. Exactly. Right. At Everything the end, you got a guitar and you have a bag of parts. The bag right. Of exactly. Parts, we, could either, um, we could either sell it or we could start the parts on, on the next one. Yeah, we'll have to we'll have to figure that out. But the the idea would be where, where wherever we send it, whatever it does. If you take something off it, it it stays with the guitar. It stays in the case, 
or the box or whatever, and it goes with it. So that would be the idea. And so, and yeah, the maybe that also be like, it should be a better part that you add to it. Don't take off something killer and put on freaking something shitty. You know, that's, we're trying to make it awesome. Yeah, don't do that. Don't be, don't be a dick. All right. Oh. So, you know, Seth, uh, we're, that gives us at our time. We want to invite our all our viewers to go ahead and raid Music Therapy Laz's channel. He's Wait, got... subscribe to me because I still am stuck at a 105. Yes. If you stay yes. this so long. Subscribe to, 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 uh, to Presley California you. Custom. Thank you. That was very good. All right. So, yes, go ahead and raid over to uh, Music Therapy Laz and his, his music therapy show. Uh it's been a lot of fun to watch so far, so I'm looking forward to seeing it unfold. We'll see you guys all next week. See you next week. Same time, same channel. All right. All right.